Hi, I'm Christina Fitzgerald, and I'm interested in the math teaching position at Lowell High School. So a little bit about me. Uh, I am very proud um, of my German heritage. My mom is German. Uh, German was my first language, uh, and my whole family on that side lives uh, still in Germany. So we, I visit as much as I can. Obviously, in pre-COVID times, it's a bit more frequent than it is now, but very proud um, of that part of my, my heritage. Uh, I'm also very loyal um, to friends and family. Uh, I am a Hufflepuff, if anybody's curious. Uh, I love to travel. I'm abroad, obviously, to see family, but always experience new things um, and try new things and learn about different places. Uh, during the pandemic, um, I picked up a hobby. I think as a teacher, usually I say teaching's my hobby, but I got really into birding um, during the pandemic, so that was pretty exciting. We don't unfortunately have enough time to delve into my favorite type of bird, but that's definitely a fun fact about me. Um, really got into that. So uh, a little bit about me um, as a professional. So me as Mrs. Phipps. Um, so I am dedicated and hardworking. My main goal as a teacher is to provide the best that I can for my kids. And so I always think through every decision. Um, I think through all of the different teacher moves that I make, the student moves, um, and I always embody a growth mindset, and I try to instill that in my students as well. And then I always give caring support to my kids. Um, they're always my kids by the end of the year, uh, and I'm always there to support them no matter what. So this is a picture of me uh, at School Culture Day um, in 2018, and then obviously during the pandemic, uh, the Bitmoji became life. So this is me um, in, the, in the virtual world of so both sides. So why Lowell? Um, Lowell is, is a great place. Um, Lowell is a great community. Uh, the school is the heart of the community, and I, that's really important to me um, when the school is the focal point uh, in any community. I'm a small town girl, grew up in a small town where that was the case, um, you know, Friday night football, all of those things. Um, and that's really something I'm looking for and something I do truly miss. Um, at Lowell, I feel like there is a great opportunity for me to grow and learn. I'm never truly done growing or learning um, as, as a teacher or as a person. Uh, so I think this would be a great experience for me um, to have teachers that are older than me um, to learn from veteran teachers. I've had the great opportunity to be an instructional coach at my current school, uh, which I have learned so much from, um, but I am one of the oldest veteran teachers at my school. We're a young, young small charter school, um, so that's kind of, that's understandable, but I'm really craving um, to have someone to learn from again, uh, and I think Lowell will provide that. Uh, in your district, you do a lot of data-driven decisions. Um, you're not afraid to change or spice things up um, in an ever-changing world uh, you know, in education, so those are all big, big points for me and make me really excited about, about Lowell High School. Your morals, your values, um, you know, owning your mistakes, taking care of each other, doing what's right. Those are all things that I instill in my classroom. And so that's very huge for me um, and makes me very excited to see that uh, that's also what you embody. So let's get into the heart and soul of teaching. Um, part of the lesson. Uh, so these are things that I typically do every day and what I generally think around when I'm designing any experience or any lesson for my students. First things first. Math is a tough sell, um, so we have to create some curiosity around a concept. Uh, we have to hook students in with something that's relevant, uh, something that will catch their attention. So every lesson starts with a relevant connection to students' lives and in some sort of fun hook. So that way I can get students to buy into the lesson. Um, it kind of keeps things light in the beginning, and so that way students, we can slowly turn up the heat um, and build that math endurance. The second part of my lesson is twofold. So depending on the context for the day, um, I, there has to be some scaffolding. So on um, the part of the teacher and questioning and discussion to get students thinking through the content. And then in generally each lesson of mine, I do for, allow for some sort of collaboration. So we've introduced it, we've talked about it, and now we're really going to get into it and kind of talk peer to peer um, about this context and really explore and investigate. Every lesson, you have to collect some data. So I'm always very mindful of my learning objective and what I want to collect and what piece of data I need to see from students um, to know if I can move on or not. So at the end of each lesson, there's always time for questions um, and some sort of check for understanding. And da data always drives my next choice. And so I always plan ahead. I'm usually a week planned a week out, but I'm not afraid to, to pump the brakes um, if we need to during the week and switch things up if the data dictates that. 
So in my class, um, this is what it would look like. Uh, students, there's not a lot of direct instruction. I don't, I do, I'm not opposed to it, but usually you'll see um, students working in groups, me circulating throughout the room, um, us having class discussions or group discussions um, and investigating a concept. So something I do a lot is what's called experience first, formalize later. Um, it came from East Kentwood High School, or as it's called, the FL lesson. Um, and it's, this is a great setup um, in terms of the four areas I've talked about. So this is a lesson I designed um, my own EFL, um, which was around a statistics concept. But um, our hook for the day was, is Brady the only one that got caught? Um, so we investigated sampling um, and football pressure and controversy in the NFL. So this was our starting prompt, and we always set the scene together. And then after that, um, that's where the magic really happens. There's some scaffolded questions that students have to work through together collaborative, collaboratively in groups. And so this would be their kind of their note sheet. This would replace your traditional like activity day or your note sheet. Um, this is your experience. So now it's, we've set the scene with our hook. Now we're going to get into it. Um, and this is where students really dive in and where I can scaffold each of those questions very strategically to get them thinking um, the way that I want. And then at the end, we summarize what we talked about. We summarize our investigation. We summarize our findings um, in, in the box like you can see here. And then we always do a check for understanding. So this could be an exit ticket. It could be an independent practice um, portion of the lesson at the end um, that I collect uh, or students submit virtually um, like we did a lot this year. So engaging all learners. The biggest thing for any classroom to get buy-in is relationships. You have to connect with your students in order for them to buy into your content. Having a positive, safe culture allows all students to feel safe and ready to take risks, both academically and socially, and providing an equitable experience for all students. Being flexible as the teacher, really getting to know your kids and how they learn, how they tick, and being willing to be flexible in your instruction um, and what you design for them in order for them to really succeed and achieve more. So clear objectives flexibility and support are all things that I incorporate into each lesson. I'm not afraid to pump the brakes or slow down. Um, some days we'll have complete differentiation where we are all working on something different based on what the data has told us. And that's okay. Learning is messy and we can't just plow through and not not make any pauses. Um, and I'm always there to support my kids. So in terms of reluctant learners, are a lot in math, having those relationships and having that scaffolding and being very cognizant of how you define the objectives for the kids and, and having them know that it's okay to take a break, make a mistake, we're going to fix it, we'll work together, um, because we are better together. Uh, those are all ways that I help struggling and reluctant math students. So thank you for your consideration today. Please check out my uh, digital portfolio um, with all of my professional items, either by scanning the QR code or going to this link. This summarizes all of my different roles, different things I've created, and has a lot of different samples on it. So thank you for your time today.